in this episode, we're going to be talking to a very good friend of mine named Robert Pierce. And Robert is a leader of one of the biggest technology companies in the world, where he's responsible for a few hundred salespeople, vice presidents, regional directors as well. And the topic that we're going to be focusing on primarily is around leadership, is around the characteristics and the principles about how to become an effective leader, how to make a difference in an organization, how to impact people, and also how to make good hiring decisions. So if you're an aspiring leader, or if you're currently in a leadership position that's looking to hone in on your craft and become better, this is a great video for you. Robert's an avid book reader, and so one of the things we will be talking about as well is, is some books and some content to read and learn about and just understand the neuroscience and human connection, and how to listen and how to make effective decisions as well. So this is a good opportunity for you to get some insight into that. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, if you like it at the end, please subscribe to the channel. We'll be posting more videos around leadership and around principles on how to evolve and craft the legend within. So thank you very much. Enjoy. I guess why leadership is important um, may not be that obvious if you don't think about it, but you know, human beings are obvious statement here. Human beings are, are just very different, right? Not everybody wants to or has the personality or ability really to be a leader in their chosen uh, field. And I mentioned their professional field because, um, you know, folks can be different at home than they are at work, right? But the fact is great leaders make an impact on those around them and, um, and certainly on their companies. And in general, uh, I'd like to think, you know, they leave the world in a better place uh, uh, than, uh, you know, once, once they're gone. And I would suggest that we all want to be influenced by leaders that we feel are um, great in, and uh, that influence us. For me, I kind of fell into it. I didn't always just aspire to lead, you know, a group of people in a company uh, per se, but, just my personality, I, I think, over the years was such that, um, you know, it became obvious to me that uh, I really enjoyed helping people get better and and uh, influencing larger groups of people. So that's, that's sort of, that was my impetus for getting into uh, a leadership role. It was kind of like an organic type of transition into leadership purely based on your character the principles you live by and just your natural want and ability to like impact other people, right? Cause you had that naturally. Well, I found as, yeah, as I was sort of growing up and coming a young adult and what have you, I found that I just kind of naturally fell into um, that kind of role, I guess, with my friends and, and, and family and that sort of thing. So, it was nat it was natural, I guess, and organic, like you said. Um, and I know that that's not the way with everyone, but I do believe there's a lot of people who have leadership qualities that they don't even know, um, like what yet. And, and, and so they, they, they want to, you really want to nurture those and, uh, those thoughts and, and ideas. Um, you know, if you're one of those people, what are some of those qualities? Well, you know, one thing that I would say is, um, you know, some would say if you're really opinionated, but I would sort of argue against that. I think maybe 20, 30 years ago, maybe further back, you know, bossy came to mind when you talk about <laughs> leadership. But for me, it's always about, it was always about influencing people uh, in a positive way and, um, influencing them in a positive way. I would say it's more about influencing them in a positive way and affecting people's lives. So let's just say you're a, you know, a freshman in high school and you've got your friends, they have problems, everyone has problems. Of course, now we look back and they weren't that, those problems weren't that big, but everyone has um, those kinds of problems. And I just found myself being, getting a lot of enjoyment and, uh, um, helping, you know, and, and, and providing insight and listening. So I would say, you know, in the sales profession, we're both in sales. Uh, listening is really important. 
And I would just say leader in a leadership position um, and in a management position, not to conflate the two because uh, they're very different, but that's listening and problem solving. Um, you know, it just, uh, it dovetails into that from a career perspective from, you know, when I was growing up. So, you know, there's no, anyone can be a manager, but it's hard. I think it's, much more difficult to be a great leader and and i would summarize my leadership principles and ideas um in the following way you know it's all about who you hire uh it's it's sort of it's almost a cliche but it's true you need to hire the best people and you need to keep them and make them feel um and, and motivate them, right? And 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 make them uh, want to be a part of your organization. So I look for lifelong learners like yourself. Um, one of the reasons why I hired you as I did, even though it took me eight years, it seems, to do so. Um, <laughs> Uh, but, uh, no, it, it, it took many, many months and I was under a lot of pressure to fill that position, but I could tell you were one of these people who longed for, uh, learning and getting better and self-improvement and genuinely, you know, had that mindset. And I think that that's arguably the most important thing that you can do when you're trying to bring people on, on board. So from, from a leadership principal perspective, I would say that's very high on the list. Make sure you've got people who have the aptitude and the desire to learn and they just take that approach at work and outside of work. You can't shut it off. You know, people who like to get better and learn and improve are doing the same thing at work that they're doing at home. So, um, so that hunger, uh, willingness to take advice, improve their craft, improve their life, actively seeking out mentors and coaches. Those are the people you want to hire and make no mistake. Not everybody is that way. Um, so find those people, hire them and then try to mentor them and uh, pass on your ideas, axioms, tools, and, and give the inspiration that, that they're craving. If you've got the right uh, folks, if they're not craving those things, you've hired the wrong people. So fail fast and replace them uh, with people who are that way. You know, I had a very wise manager of mine once say, you know, you can improve ignorance, which is just, you know, um, not knowing, right? You can improve that, right. but you're not likely to fix apathy. You can't fix that. So, uh, and I would just say true desire, right, is essential and not everyone has it um, for sure. And just coaching and mentorship instills a loyalty and a camaraderie and a culture of improvement and that leads to results. I think a lot of, a big mistake a lot of people have is just go right to the results. Hey, I just want to win the Super Bowl but they don't want to put in all the time in the process and the culture that leads to those results. So, um, but it's also really important and, and I'll probably mention this more than once, not to forget that results matter. It isn't just about feel good, you know, loyalty, everybody's happy. Everybody likes you, you know, you, the results matter and you can't lose sight of that because no one's going to continue to get paid for an organization as a leader if they're not delivering results. So you just have to remember we're in a results oriented world. And uh, I don't think that's changing anytime soon. So you got to put the processes in place and really um, make sure that uh, you're balancing the results and, and uh, also driving all the other uh, things that I said with the right balance. I love that. I love that. I love that you said you got to hire the best people. You know, I was actually talking to a leader a couple of weeks ago. And so one of the things she said to me was, you know, I'm really trying so hard to focus on how I hire the best people. Like, cause I said to her, what do you mean? And so she said to me, you know, there's so many folks that show up really, really well when you meet them for the first time. 
and thereafter, you know, it's not the same person that showed up. Right. And so she said to me, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Do you, do you suggest I validate better or do you suggest I fire faster? And uh, I thought that was a very interesting question, right? Because it both pertains to developing as a hiring leader. And so I'd love to get your perspective on that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I, one of the mistakes I made early on in my career um, was thinking that I could change uh, everyone and, uh, and improve everyone. And I think I alluded to this a little bit earlier, but um, you, you just can't, you can't do that. You don't have enough time <laughs> to change everyone. So you really have to look for certain qualities and DNA. Um, you know, I believe that most people, certainly the best workers and the best salespeople, because we're, we're both sales leaders, you know, not only expect to be held accountable, but they actually like being held accountable. Right. You know, they know what makes them better. They, you know, they know, they, they, they know they need to be pushed. And, and also it helps them separate themselves from others who, um, you know, perhaps aren't hitting the mark and, and don't have the same, whatever, desire, aptitude, uh, you know, um, effort level, whatever it is. So I, I don't think I'm breaking any new ground by saying that right. really, really strong salespeople are pretty competitive by nature. So you got to look for those traits when you're um, interviewing. And, and, and she's right. It's easily faked. So you got to really kind of peel back the onion skins to really find out who's who's like that and um i don't think it's impossible but you're gonna make mistakes uh, again another very wise mentor of mine of which i have many said don't you know no matter how good you are at hiring you're gonna make some mistakes someone's gonna fool you in the interview so fail fast move them out you cannot you're not doing them any favors. You're not doing yourself any favors or the company any favors because they're mismatched. Um, so I guess I would lean that way just because naturally I think we all, you, me, her, um, have a tendency to think that we can, uh, you know, we're going to change, change people and, and uh, six months from now they're going to be completely different. So I would just say look for attributes more than anything else because – it's tough to change people's personality. That's a good point. Thank you. So, you know, one of the things you mentioned earlier on, right, which I really, really liked was, you know, in addition to hiring the best people and you know, getting the best people to believe in your vision and share the same vision and, you know, ideology and, and methodology and strategy and, and just follow that, right? Find the people that actually, that you can lead and follow that. And so in this time that we're in right now, you know, especially in the sales world, there's a lot of that that gets impacted, you know, when you're physically in front of people, when you're physically with people, when you're in person, connecting with each other. And of course, you know, sometimes there's a stigma around salespeople having too many dinners and going out all the time and just spending that amount of time with their peers, with their leaders, with their customers, etc. And that's changed rapidly, right? That's changed for every single one of us out there, not just for salespeople. And so... You know, how do you lead in a time like this, digital-wise, where you have people, you make an impact digitally with people, and you have people follow you, like to everything you mentioned earlier on? Like, what is your view on that? Well, uh, we're we're figuring it all out, right? Um, it, it really hasn't been that much time. It, it seems like it's been <laughs> um, years, but it really hasn't. It's been months since we've been in this new time um but you know i i think so i think we all need to uh number one i i think it's important to talk to others much like you're doing with me today so that we can share ideas because you know you don't if somebody's figured something out you don't want to have to recreate the wheel if somebody's already thought about that number one i think it's really important um to do 
video conferencing uh, such as we're doing instead of where people people's faces uh mannerisms you know the actual video versus just the uh the photo i think that that's really important um it doesn't take the place of the personal connection in 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 person um but it certainly helps a lot and and so as a leader i i mandate that with my group we have lots of meetings and and sometimes when we first started people would just say well you know my hair's thickening up i'm and I got a sweatshirt on and I'm like, okay, um, put on a collared shirt, comb your hair and get on video. Uh, cause it's just important. I just think it's important part of trying to backfill for some of that human connection. That's one thing I would say. Um, you know, the other thing is, and this is a little bit off track on what you asked about, uh, verse, you know, in, in person versus virtual, but I will say, we're in some unusual situations right now, uh, to say the least. So I think it's really important that leaders today start with empathy and understanding first, you know, before just cutting right to the chase. Um, not overdoing it, but I just think it's important. The human touch, the human connection, trying to find some common ground, dogs barking in the background, which we just experienced, all of that kind of thing. We're all in the same boat. We're all dealing with the same kind of thing. And I think that that's really important, especially in sales and relationships are so important in, in our profession. I think it's really um, okay, more than okay, uh, to let your hair down a little bit, let your dog bark, uh, you know, people walking behind you, you know, in, 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 uh, in the video somehow, some, sometimes. And I just think it's, um, you know, that kind of thing is really important where you might not have thought about it before. So I think that that kind of connection and common, you know, humanity um, is really important and, and, and that shouldn't be lost. The other thing that I'll say though, is since we're talking about leadership, you know, leadership in every role is always a delicate balance of a number of things, right? Cost and quality, speed and accuracy, right? Empathy and accountability and results, right? It doesn't do anyone any good, I don't think. And, and I'm speaking specifically about sales management um, to pretend that results don't matter in times of tumult and anxiety and, um, you know, just all that's going on right now, but especially in sales. So, you know, what kind of a sales rep wouldn't want a boss pushing them, you know, challenging them, demanding um, they're accountable? The answer is the sales rep who really isn't interested in optimizing his or her ability or her earnings um, and one you probably don't want on your team, honestly. So I would just say the best leaders are constantly striving for just the right balance between all of these things. But, but the humanity and the human touch is just critical in these days of virtual meetings and, uh, uh, such that we're having right now. So, um, and I'm learning, I'm getting better. Uh, I continue to learn every day. So, um, we are getting better. I'm finding what's really interesting is I'm finding it's almost easier um, to develop a rapport with customers and partners, but customers in particular and executives because we're all dealing with the same issues. And uh, like I said, the CEO of a company, I deal with a lot of CEOs, a lot of CFOs, um, you know, uh, not visiting them in their mahogany uh, desk office and, you know, um, you know, expansive uh, uh, facilities. <laughs> They're in their home office, their dogs barking, maybe their kids, you know, telling them to get off the internet so they can uh, log into Netflix. It's just, it's, it actually can turn into a positive, I guess is what I'm saying. And it's important to recognize that and to make sure your team understands that um, 
you know, the human connections can actually be accelerated, you know, in these days compared to, uh, um, compared to the days of old. Yeah. I, I so agree with that. Like it's, it's amazing and interesting and fun and personal, but at the same time to see how everyone is dealing with the same thing. Everyone has the same situations with their dogs barking with their kids in the background with their bandwidth constraints of the internet being consumed all across the house. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty entertaining for sure. Well, I know that you have told your sales teams over the years, just as I have, you know, look, just because someone has a C in front of their name, <laughs> they still have to get up in the morning, put the pants on, put their <laughs> socks on, take the shower, you know, I don't know, take the dog for a walk. We're all just, Human People beings. dealing with, uh, with, with, with what's going on. And I, I just think that this virtual world that we're in um, really kind of drives that message home. So it, it can actually be helpful. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Switching gears a little bit, right? But just sticking on the leadership topic, I thought this would be important, especially for the folks that are watching this, that are up and coming, that are growing into leadership roles, that want advice, that want the right direction, they want ideas, they want platforms to learn from, etc. I remember one of the things you told me many, many years ago was when I told you I wanted to get into leadership, the first thing you said to me was, well, lead the team around you, make an impact to the folks around you, help them get better. And then you're organically and you're naturally becoming the leader that you say you want to be. And that was so powerful for me back then. I don't know, I don't know if you know that, but that was like super, super powerful for me because it really stuck with me in every area that I wanted to grow within, I always look at how I'm impacting the folks around me before I make my own requisition within myself about where I'm going next. And uh, you know, so what are your thoughts in addition to that? Like, what are your thoughts to the individual contributors out there today that are on a mission to be in leadership, that want to make an impact, that want to have people follow them, create a vision, create a strategy, and, uh, and make an impact? Yeah, well, look, you, you hit on a, uh, an important one. So that's advice I give to a lot of people, you know, become the leader that you want to become and, 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 and assume the role, um, not in a bossy way, but just as a uh, an informal leader, right? And, 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 and that certainly will help, um, you know, get you where you want to go. But first of all, just think about, now I know, I remember you, spoke very highly of previous managers that you've had and, and one in particular um but i'm sure you've had an, uh, a number of them um and it's no coincidence i always think i had the best managers too and and you think you had the best managers partially because we were probably pretty pretty good employees you know along the way but you know think about what i would say to people is think about the best managers and the best leaders you've had or you've come in contact with and what made you feel that way about them, right? Who pushed you um, in the right way? You know, who inspired you, more importantly? Who made you feel like you didn't want to let them down? Um, how did they do that? Who did you learn the most from? And then think about all the reasons you felt that way and, and aspire to become more like that. Right, just evolve into the people that made you feel that way because those around you will feel that way about you. Um, just remember, everyone, almost everyone, wants to be led. You're always going to get a renegade here or there, but most people want to be led. They want to grow. They want to know that their boss truly has their best interest in mind or their peer, right? I mean, it's a competitive field. So if you're a peer and you're not someone's boss, but the people around you feel that you sincerely, authentically want to help them get better and you're doing things to do that, that's powerful. I mean, really powerful, right? And it has to be sincere. Some people try to fake it. They think they're great actors and they'll fake it. You know, oh, I really want to just beat their brains in and be number one and see everyone else fail. No one's that good an actor. So if you genuinely want to help people around, around them and you're helping them do that, it will come across that way. So um, I, I think that that's one of the things. The other thing is, 
you know, you can't do all of the things that I just mentioned and not deliver, right? It's just really important for everyone to understand you can be a mentor, you can help people get better, you can do all of this, but if you're not delivering results in our business, maybe in different businesses, but in our business, you know, you're not going to go very far if you're not delivering. So you need uh, to perform. Um, and that the combination of all the things that I just mentioned there, you know, if you've been in business for a decade or longer, you, you recall that your best managers, the ones that you think that the, the most highly of, they're also the ones that delivered great results for the company. Funny how that works. Funny how so, that works. Yeah. You, know, you like them, they're pushing you, you're learning from them, but guess what? They're also delivering. And so, you know, and I, and I would just say, always have as many trusted mentors as you can. Um, I know you've got a few, I've got a lot. It never ends, no matter what level you've achieved or whatever title you have, you need to have people you can trust to help you get better and who genuine, genuinely want to help you get better. And when you surround yourself with those people and stay in touch with them, uh, as you know, I try to do uh, quite uh, regularly, um, that will serve you well for, uh, you know, for where you want to go. So that's my advice. You do a phenomenal job at keeping in touch with people and just communicating with people all around. Like I can't tell you how many folks I've com communicated with and talked to that's within our network that still have that access to you and still get a lot of value, right? Not just talk to you, but still get a lot of value from everything you provide and everything you talk about. So yeah, you do a really, really good job at that. One of the well, it's not, it, it, let me just say this. Um, it doesn't just happen. You have to think that it's important I mean, I have to schedule it, to, to, to be honest. I mean, I'm, it's not that I have a lot of extra time on my hands and I'm just saying, oh, geez, I should go check in on uh, Susan and I should go check in on, uh, you know, Sally and I should go check in on uh, Rashawn. It's not the way it works. Um, you, you, it has to be important enough to you to actually um, schedule it. So that's the little secret, uh, right. dirty, dirty little secret is I, is I, you know, I work at it because I enjoy it. And I, and I said this before, but I, you know, it's very, I'm very sincere on this. I learn, number one, you, the best way to learn is by teaching, right? We'll all agree. I, I think we can all agree that that's the case. Um, and two, um, I learn every time I talk to uh, uh people who are like-minded and coming up in their careers. So it helps me too. Yeah. Yeah, no, I love that. One of the things I heard a couple, a couple months ago, right. And this has been like a hot topic for a long time, uh, just from a leadership perspective in terms of like the things you talked about around listening, communicating, influencing, like really focusing on, on leadership by those principles. And the thing that came up was being a good storyteller, like in order for you to communicate effectively, influence successfully and listen as well, you know, you need to be a good storyteller and just tell good stories. And even with customers, right? You know, I think customers as well have like multiple different people contacting them, especially in our world, just like from a technology providing perspective. And so what are your thoughts on storytelling? Like what is your approach? What is your idea and your view on becoming or performing storytelling? Well, look, I do a lot of, um, I'm a big reader and I do a lot of, uh, I read a lot of books and I, and I do a lot of uh, just reading online as well, in addition to books um, about human nature and how we're wired as you as human beings neuroscience and and what have you and you've heard me you know having worked for me you know that this is a uh, um a big topic for me but what it really boils down to is may and I, I actually i talked about this before so kind of coming um, full circle on this subject of human connection so human beings are really emotional creatures uh you know we're not that logical we we think we're logical um, but we're not that logical. We're very driven by emotions, um, habits, um, 
you know, uh, how we've been wired in the past, you know, the lens in which we view the world uh, based on our own experiences, et cetera, et cetera. So the storytelling is a way to accelerate, you know, the impact of what we're saying by increasing the humanity and the human connection, you know, and, and I don't think I'm saying anything uh, too, you know, revelationary here, but, um, but that's why it's really, that's why it's important. Everyone wants to connect. Human beings have a desire to connect and the storytelling helps us connect um, with other people, but also ideas with the messaging. You know, the story obviously leads to a connection with, um, you know, the message, especially the message that you're trying to leave if you're in our uh, line of work. And, you know, everyone loves a good story. I mean, it, it started when we were very young. You've got, um, you know, young kids. I, uh, I, my kids are older now, but everyone loves a good story. And that doesn't change when you become an adult. So I would say it's incredibly important. I love the TED Talks. You know, it, it, it's probably overly uh, hyped, but the TED Talks are great because there's always a story. There's always a connection. There's always something that makes you, that, that moves you. Um, data doesn't move people. Stories move people. And you just have to be cognizant of that if you're going to be successful in business and in sales. And I'm very cognizant of that. So my answer is <laughs> storytelling is really important. And if you want to be really good at sales, enterprise software sales in particular, uh, but I would say any kind of sales, you better get good at storytelling and to work on it. It isn't just, you know, everyone says, go to Toastmasters, be a good speaker. Sure. But guess what's a big part of that? Storytelling. So, um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just an incredibly uh, important part of um, being a leader, really, uh, especially if you want to progress to second, third, fourth line um, leadership positions, you got to be able to tell a good, st a story that, that brings it all together and, um, sort of codifies, um, the whole, um, you know, the structure of what you're trying to do. I had a seller come to me not too long ago and he says to me, you know, you've got so much of experience. And every time I hear you communicate with customers, with partners, with people that you work with, you always have a story to tell, but those stories pertain from the experience you've had over the many years that you've been doing what you've been doing. And he says to me, for him, he's relatively young and you know he's just started on his career in the enterprise software world, but very, very, very talented person, very, very skilled as well, you know, really knows how to perform the, the tasks and fulfill his job duties. And so he said to me like, you have so much of experience. What's, it, what's his name? What is his name again? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> he says to me, how do I get good at storytelling? I, I get why it's important. I see how you use it. I see how people are receptive to it. How do I get there? And so I had a response for him, but I'd love to hear what your response would have been. Yeah, this is class. This is, this is perfect. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'll tell you the people who, have are, are the most natural with these stories and with their presentations it looks like they just got up there and just you know did it extemporaneously right it's it's all practice it's all you know to make it look natural and to have it have the impact that you want it to have and i know you know this because you are the um you know you're the king of uh practice and and uh um and honing and polishing your messages <laughs> but that's the thing i would tell him or anyone else <laughs> just because it looks natural and off the cuff it isn't somebody thought to, whoever's delivering that 90 percent of the time some people maybe are just gifted and they can just wing it but for the rest of us it's because you gave a lot of thought to it you, you, you scripted it out. You took this out. You added this in. You changed this word. You practiced it. That's what makes it good. So, so the storytelling just doesn't flow 
takes practice and it takes um, thought, forethought. Um, and, and, and I know for a fact, uh, because you've worked for me, um, so <laughs> uh, not to embarrass you or anything, but when you were giving your presentations and people said, oh, that was a great presentation, I know that you were going to work two hours before anyone else showed up and practicing either by yourself or with some like-minded um, salesperson to really polish that stone and make sure that it's a great story. So that, that's my answer. Yeah. It, takes, it takes hard work to make it look effortless and uh, natural. That's, I know people watching this is probably wondering what my response was. And it was exactly that. It was exactly that practice, pick somebody that you can tell a story to, ask them to listen to it the way the person you're supposed to tell it to should listen to it and get their feedback and get people's honest feedback, present it to people, tell it to people that you know is going to give you the direct and honest feedback. Robert, yeah. you mentioned something else on the topic of storytelling. You're a big book fanatic, as I know as well. You and I are always talking about a good book, about a good article. You're always blogging and sharing information around you know these, these key areas that we're talking about. What are some of the top books you would recommend? Oh, geez. <laughs> that is tough. Well, it, it, it's tough just because <laughs> I should actually bring my computer over to my uh, uh, to my 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 nightstand. Um, I, I'm just re I'm just reading a lot a lot of books at any given time. But you know, thinking fast and slow is a great one. Um, you know, that's if somebody wants to Google that, they should Google that. Um, anything about emotional intelligence is really good. Um, oh my gosh. So I, I try to read one book about science and neuroscience and um, human behavior and that sort of thing. And then I try to read a book and sometimes I'm reading two or three at one time. I try to read a book on economics because I think that it's important if you're in business to understand economic concepts. Um, so I, I'm always reading something like that. And then I read a lot of historical nonfiction. I read a lot about just great uh, leaders, honestly. I, I, I've read probably uh, 10 books on Churchill. I'm reading one right now, which is really good. Uh, I highly recommend it. That's called The Splendid and the Vile uh, by Eric Larson. Phenomenal book. Um, just about his interest, uh, Churchill's interesting leadership style, as well as Roosevelt at the time. Um, they were very different, but they were they were able to move. They understood human nature. It all dovetails back to human nature and human behavior and the way the brain works. And uh, both of them in their own way were great leaders and great orators because they understood how to move people and tell stories and use the right words and phrases. And they didn't do it off the cuff. You know, uh, many people who, I know I'm getting off topic a little bit, but uh, this is, you, you hit a, uh, uh, a subject uh, that's near and dear to my heart. You know, Churchill was a very odd man, but, and when he gave his speeches, it looked like it was, he was pouring his heart out to the recipients. And he was for sure. I mean, he would, but, but those speeches that he gave were again, honed, polished every word, meticulously chosen um, the phrases, the turning of the phrases and, and what have you. Um, so I read a lot about that, but it all kind of comes together, which is what's going to make me more well-rounded as a person, as a father um, and as a leader. And, and so I re read a lot um, and I suggest everyone do the same. I do not believe that there's a lot of young people today who, and this is not an indictment um, on them, but I just, they don't know the value of really reading a full book, like a real book. And I don't care if it's on a Kindle or your 
iPad or, or what have you, but, um, but reading a full book instead of just snippets um, here and there, magazine articles, um, you know, short little things that they get on their phone. Those are important too, but reading a full book by a great author like Eric Larson, you know, um, and many, many, many others, there's no substitute for it and it will make your brain uh, and the synapses and the, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, it will physically make your brain better and smarter um, if you do that. So that's one of the, I, I guess that would be one of the takeaways I would leave for people is, and it's not just because I'm a, a voracious reader, I know this to be a fact. So if you're not a reader, force yourself to become a reader. Pick one book that you know is good. You've read the reviews. You get an uh, update uh, or you get a um, recommendation from someone like you, Rashawn, um, and go to bed a half an hour earlier. Read for a half an hour. What will happen, because it always happens, is you'll be reading for more than a half an hour because there's so many great books out there. And, um, and you'll become a reader. But if you're not today, I would highly suggest that you do that because it will uh, change your life. That's brilliant. You know, I love how you find the time and how you're so disciplined about it. Cause I mean, I don't know a lot of people will probably not know this, but you're a pretty big deal. You're managing several hundreds of people and you're finding the time to balance out your life and your personal investment. And I gotta tell you, it's very admirable. That's uh, one of the many things I love about you. <laughs> Thank you, Rashawn. Last question for you. What is the impact you want to make on everybody that you lead and around you? The impact. Um, I think I touched on this a little bit before, but, um, you know, I think we're all not just leaders in business, but just in general, um, leaders in general have experiences and wisdom and insight from the, ex from those experiences that can help other people. Um, you know, there's an old saying, if you want to get what you want, help enough people, other people get what they want. And, but I would, even that aside from a self-serving perspective, you know, I've, um, I've come in contact with and gained a lot of value from, you know, different interactions and, and with different people. And, you know, I just think life is much more fulfilling when you're passing that on to, uh, uh, to someone else. So not to get too, uh, out there, and <laughs> esoteric, but, you know, I like to think that some of what I've passed on and, and will continue to pass on, you know, will then, be shared with others and have the same positive effect, you know, sort of like a ripple uh, effect, if you will. Um, and, you know, have a positive, have a good influence on people's lives. So my humble wish for how I, you know, want to impact things uh, is, is really just to have uh, ha influence people in a positive way and then have them do the same thing for, uh, for the people they come in contact with. I love it. I love it. Robert, thank you so much. Thank you for doing this. You know, this, yeah. is, uh, this is very admirable. And, you know, I love that you do this. I love the impact that you make to people. I love that, you know, you're really never hesitating to share and then just help people get better, right? And just make an impact to human society. So I love that. You're very near and dear to my heart. You know that. I have massive, massive, massive love and respect for you. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for watching that. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll continue to subscribe to the channel and listen to more of the content that we'll be putting out specifically on these topics. My name is Rishan Bharat. Appreciate you listening in. Have a wonderful day.